me welcome to the stage, Dax Shepard. famous friend, so I'm here. Woo! The other six had other things. Um, I just want to say that I, I um, had the great privilege of interviewing David Ferrier maybe three years ago. It was about conspiracy theories. In the middle of it, he mentioned that he had directed Tickle. And if you've seen Tickle, Woo! it's the greatest Woo! documentary of our generation. Nobody can get under someone's skin like David Ferrier. There's some weird mix of cuteness and irritability. There's some, there's some proprietary stew that makes us all love David Ferrier. Uh, and then, of course, I've been able to work with him almost uh, you know, a few days a week now for the last two years. So I have the biggest crush on David Ferrier. He's such a gift to all of us. And I would love for him to come up and celebrate a big, warm welcome. Special shorts for David. These are his most bright, exciting life of shorts. shorts. Yeah. yeah, they get very short when I sit down. So they look Thank great in them. Thank you for coming to be my hype man. I oh, really yeah, yeah. It. For life, I'll do yeah. it until I die. I've given you the really awful task of quizzing me about this afterwards, which is sort of mean when you've just watched it. But I'm looking forward to that. I am as am I. And you're welcome to ask questions as well. Um, all I'd say is that uh, this started in a similar way to Tickled, and then it started as something I was writing about, and then I decided to start filming it. It's a sort of a smaller scale thing than Tickled, and it's a very New Zealand sort of based film, and that's all I'd really say about it. Okay, can I say one cute thing? Uh, who, so a lot of people saw Tickled, right? I mean, the followers to Tickled were even weirder, right? Where the guy started appearing at the screenings. So I think for all of us to feel safe, we want to know. Other thing you need to know, David Ferrier calls bad guys baddies. That's what they say in New Zealand. Yeah. That's what they are. Yeah. Baddies. Baddies. So my main question is, are there any baddies from the film that we need to be aware of that could be in the audience? I think we're okay that the, the main baddie is Karen Allen Walcott in New Zealand. Okay, great, great, great. very far from here. Okay. So I think we're okay. There's no way to take a light think, here. Yeah. I, look, you never know. You don't know. But I think we're okay. One of the many exciting things that's about to follow. Uh, Please, everybody, let's celebrate David Ferrier. smacked his ass. Yeah. There was lots of that happening all the time, but it would flip really quickly. He'd do a lot of that, and then he'd be awful, and then he'd be flirty, and it was just constantly going back and forth, back and forth. He probably resented you that the love was unrequited, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing that isn't really in the film, and it's weird how many parallels there were with Tickled, because David D'Amato was very clearly a gay man. Michael Organ is as well, and that's just not really part of the narrative because it's a separate issue, I think. But he was, yeah, he's very easy to bisexual gay, and Gillian, in, in his world that he's created, she's in love with him, so he's pretending not to be, but that was very much who he is. 
Okay, great. So that brings me another curiosity, which is, um, is he financially independent, or is, is he just milking her? Is yeah, she milking, the one? yeah. She, she, yeah, when they sold that prop in Northland, they got a couple of million for it. And he just drains, drains her. He's like a leech. Okay. What is he spending money on? Wine. He loves his, wine. His wine, his tea, yeah. just, just antiques. Yeah. Um, he's always getting different... Just cars, just just okay. bullshit. Right. Yeah. Um, like an Elton Johnny thing, a little bit. Yeah. Love shopping. Um, there was a weird parallel with this movie, I thought, in the jinx of it, which is like Robert Durst just couldn't stay away from him. Yeah. Right? Like, did it shock you, uh, aside from maybe that he had a crush on you, just. And I guess it's maybe an extension of his narcissism, how he just, he couldn't resist talking to no, you. No, there there's that bit where he was really angry and he had trespassed me, and then I say to him, like, would you like to sit down for a cup of coffee? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, there was a lot of that. You, you had the ability to disarm him at all times by just being uh, mildly nice and inviting to him. Yeah, I still don't understand how his brain operates. And it's hard, it's hard to get across as well because it was, Tickle was so easy to make in comparison to this because it had a clear sort of, I could understand what David D'Amato was doing. Michael Organ is this weird enigma where the edit was a nightmare because he talks for so long. Like those conversations were all like five plus hours, and most people. You know that movie Twenty Seven or Seventy Two when his arms caught in the rock. Oh, yeah. I began to feel that way watching this movie, where I was like, "Oh my god, he's got to shut the fuck up." Yeah, no, it's tough because yeah. you, it, it, it it does ruin your mental faculties. Like it, we, it, it fucks it fucked me up in a big way. Yeah. But it's really hard to to get that across in a 90 minute film because you can't just run the conversations. And the trouble with them is, a conversation that has its own logic over five hours, if you cut that scene down to two minutes for this, it makes no sense at all. He just can't, it's unusable. Yeah. And that's his kind of curse, is that he's so, people have described him, he's like an energy vampire from what we do in the shadows. He's like, oh, no, and I, I, I only sort of made that connection because I hadn't watched that until after I made this. And but he is—he's an energy vampire. You're right. It's an almost impossible task because the the true story is the five hours. Yeah. And to condense it in a way that oh, it's impossible. Just, I yeah. cried in that edit, Dan. Dan Kirch, who cut it, suffered. He has since killed himself, right? Yes. <laughs> he's still with Has us. it occurred to you, you, you are also us. this man? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he cut a whole other film while we made this and got half of another film done while we're doing this. Uh -huh. And this just dragged on and on and on because it was just so difficult. Michael, it was awful being with Michael and then it's awful being with him again in the edit trying to make sense of him into a film to present and to sort of show how he operates. It also triggered like when I've seen these very bullyish detectives coercing um, confessions out of people. Yeah. Like I could see you getting broken. And as your protector, I wanted to go in and start arguing with him. You know, I know, I, you know, I love to argue. I was like, let me at this fucking guy. Let's talk loud at each other. But it's also it's embarrassing because it's I'm capable of putting hard questions to people, but he does. Like he lobotomizes you over a long period of time. So when it came to a point in the conversation when I wanted to put something hard to him. It's, it's honestly, if you, unless you've experienced Michael, it's hard to show. It just kind of dumbs you down. And well, any time I was ready to do that to him, I was just spaced out, almost on a drug or something. It was really unusual. It is. It was like a quintessential abusive relationship where he is the ultimate gaslighter. And you kind of could see real time how people just kind of surrender out of... Yeah. It, he puts, it, he, he puts it's insurmountable. Victims. Yeah, he puts his victims and... There were other victims in there we couldn't include in the film for a variety of reasons, but you know, Gillian's the current mark, and obviously Brent Lewis was another one. Uh, and yeah, he's very good at picking people who are vulnerable, and he works his way in, and he's smart at picking people. Yeah, he underestimated you. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'm like sure. when you put together all the pieces of that he has been talking singularly about himself. 
Oh yeah, that was wild. And he didn't something. see that coming. He's like, I have an outfox in this motherfucker. First in the courtroom, now on all these yeah. phone calls. Yeah, there was a lot of that, and yeah, we specifically. I caught bits of it at the time, but the bit where he was talking about the lawyer who was hanging around Brent Lewis being dodgy. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's comical in a way. Yeah. It's just, it's him. It's, it's all him. Okay, I'm sure a lot of people have um, questions here. So, yes, yeah. my friend. Uh, yeah. So, first of all, was the porch fenced in? Was Julian fenced in the house? <laughs> it's hard to know. Right, free. <laughs> Is this a free Britney kind of situation? Like, do we need to... A yeah, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> like, it's funny, like, you laugh him in a way, but if he's the worst person I've ever met. If he walked in front of my car, I'm not breaking. <laughs> I don't know. He's a fuckwit. He's a piece of shit. That's on camera. Men who are sort of serial predators, love yep. fraud, dirty John. Now this, and like I just think it's really interesting how you are identifying these almost super predators. It's fascinating. Yeah, and what I like about this, like he's not killed, he's not murdered. There's not a bunch of bodies under the house. He's just a version of men that we've all. You've probably met people like this. That they exist. They're often men, um, and there's versions of organ everywhere. I just think he's a particularly honed version of that thing. Yeah, there's a little Charlie Manson vibe too. There's like, oh, he has the power to. Brainwash somebody. He's charming, and I've seen him be charming. And he, he, the way he's sort of put himself in that small community in New Zealand in Whanganui, which is a really small town where him and Julia live. You know, he's he. There's people writing to me at the moment about they've seen the trailer for this, and they're like, "Why are you being mean to Michael? <laughs> like you're a piece of shit. Like back off." And I'm just like, "Fuck's sake!" Like, are you sure that's not Michael though? <laughs> Yeah, it could yeah, be. Good point. Uh, oh, wonderful. I'm going to go deep back. Blue sweatshirt. Um, so, in the middle of the film, it seemed like you expressed some regret about the process. So, uh, now that it's over, it, it, if you could travel back in time, would you, would you still go through with all of it? No, fuck no. <laughs> no, no, no. I hate it. Exists and I'm glad it exists. And I think I like to think that we're releasing in New Zealand in November in cinemas. We're releasing in a cinema opposite where he currently lives. <laughs> Main Street. Um, he turned up at that cinema threatening the cinema owner yesterday. Um, that cinema owner before Michael turned up wasn't going to play it. He's like, I don't need to deal with this. But since Michael turned up to threaten him, he's like, no, fuck it. We're playing it. <laughs> I came across Michael in 2016, we'd released Tickled, I was in New Zealand, uh, I met him, I thought this is intriguing and interesting, I wish I'd never fucking met him, he's a piece of shit, <laughs> and I wish I'd never had to deal with him. Do you have a new, uh, do you have a ring camera for your new home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I put cameras up, um, yeah, yeah they're in with us. <laughs> His unnamed address is he lives with us. I had cameras up. He got around the cameras. I don't know how. Oh. It's, it's, it's things that happen that it's so impossible to explain in the visual form if you don't have it. It's just me. There's a lot of this film that would just be me narrating. It just sounds like lunacy and paranoia. So a lot of that didn't, wasn't in there. But he got around the cameras. I don't know how. And do you have a theory on how he got your key? Did he Not get a previous uh, tenant? Maybe? That would have been a good maybe, idea. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. You know, it was a flat. I lived with different people. People came and went. He might have... He's a he's sneaky. He's creepy. He hangs out. It is a glimpse into your lifestyle that so many people had access to your key that you couldn't possibly <laughs> narrow it down. Like, that would, that would be an easy I thing for me. My sister gave me the key. Three people living in the house. <laughs> um, that's a good point. But no, he... he He's the sort of person that he's got nothing better to do, so he'll just sit outside your house and probably watch people come and go. Yeah. He might have followed a person that lived there, another flatmate, mm. got their key, they didn't notice. I, I don't know, mm. it's weird though. Was it one under the rug? I we never, no, there was nothing under the rug. There was nothing under, under, the rug. under the pot planter, um, none of that. None of the cute rock with none the of spidey that. door. <laughs> you were about to... Are you concerned that the release of this film will instigate him to, uh, like, 
looking into you and coming after you? I mean, I'm here, which is good. <laughs> he doesn't have a passport at the moment, which right. is good. Um, I'm curious what you'll do when I'm back in November, because um, he will be... Yeah, I mean, he... Uh, yeah, there's an element of that, but I'm also, it's really nice being in America and not being in New Zealand. Part of the reason of coming here last year, part of it was to work on another film, part of it was to get the fuck away from him. Because New Zealand's small, and he's a piece of shit. And I had to deal with him for four years, so fuck him. He's stuck in there, he can't go anymore. Yeah. Okay. How, How old is he? He's such a convincing job of the die on the beard. He could be 24. 54. Yeah. So he'll be around for a while. He's the only one. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Gentleman in the hat. Um, so you're a great writer, you're a podcaster, you're a documentarian. How do you decide what format a story should take? And do you see them, those different things as informing each other, or do you have a format that you prefer? I, I like to start everything with writing. I write a newsletter called Web Room at the moment, and I test out a lot of stuff with writing to see if people respond to it. And then from there, I'll try and get an indication of where it, I mean, it's everything. I, I, I mean, this podcast we do is interesting because that's like a weekly storytelling thing. And there's episodes we've done where I think, like the RV episode about people living in RVs and how that looks in America, that now has my brain going, that's really interesting to me the way people are using RVs, and that has my documentary brain ticking. Well, I think there's another Michael Organ on oh, the streets is. of Los Feliz, <laughs> and it. I want to be a part of that yeah. expose. Yeah. 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 So many of his mobile tenants are in front of my home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of them are out. So no, I, but I think testing stuff, writing is good, and, and sort of poking the bear and seeing what comes from it. If I can say as someone who gets to produce some of the stuff he does, um, yeah, he's so talented at so many things. He's such a likable on-camera presence. He's so quirky and interesting. Um, but his writing is by far, in my opinion, uh, the thing that is really separates him from everybody. And the prolificness of him is staggering. Like the amount of work he does for the show we do weekly, the amount of work he's doing on the side, then I'll see him two hours later, there's a whole web worm. It, it's staggering how prolific he is. I'm I have no life. I'm <laughs> well, now with shorts like this, so no one nearby is bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I guess the one thing I like realized watching this movie was like I guess I'd always wondered about this about New Zealand, but I guess this movie confirmed and I just wanted to hear you talk about it a little bit. It seems like it's like a big small town in a way. It seems like like to an extent like everybody kind of knows everybody, but like it's an entire like small island. That's like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's it's claustrophobic. In, in Auckland, I live in the biggest city there, and you can't go out on a you know for dinner or to walk along the two main streets and not bump into people. Like, and it's a stereotype. It's like I know I know Jermaine from Concords, I know Taika from Lord who lived down the road. Um, I, it's ridiculous how small it is. Um, but you know we've got just over five million people. It's the nature of the place. If you work in documentary or, or journalism it's even smaller or entertainment. So it's wonderful and a curse at the same time. But unfortunately, yeah, when you do get someone like Michael around, that's when the smallness becomes quite annoying. And it's easy to find people's addresses. It's 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 easy to hide and be a, uh, difficult to hide and be anonymous. I mean, if anything, I'd imagine like with somebody like that, like, it would make everything way more possible. Like the way that he like, like traps people in like their own minds and like totally. people. Like, and he, he's very good at um, seeding doubt and, and getting rid of your friends and isolating you. And I think that's really easy to do in um, Aotearoa. As someone who worked there for three months, it's a beautiful place. And they put a poached egg on every dish there. Cereal, yeah. salad, anything. You know, Everything on the free I, poached egg. I was around at my friend's house, Janina, uh -huh. and she was in, and she was an extra on Without a Paddle. Without a Paddle. Okay. And you're in a, you're in a scene together. Oh. I never knew she was in it. Did you get inside dirt on me? Like, was he a No, you, really, no, you were lovely. Oh, she liked me? Yeah, That's yeah. great. Yeah, no, so very interesting. That must have been pre-relapse there. Last week, she had met me on the last week of the filming. Could have been a different story. <laughs> no, she had a great time. Yeah, it's a small world. Beautiful place. Recommend everyone go there. Yes, sir. 
Uh, I'm sure we will just cut. You said there's so much, so much that had to be cut. Were, were there any stories or uh, about uh, Michael uh, or that people told you that could, didn't make the final cut? And I don't, I don't if, if there's any that you're well willing to share. Yeah, you. loads. I I can't talk to a lot of them. New Zealand has incredibly annoying defamation law, uh, where it's incredibly protective. You can't defame anyone. So there are so many stories. There are other suicides we cut. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. If I lived in America and I was making this, there'd be more, but because it's New Zealand, I can't. And even my, my lawyer told me specifically not to say that, because... <laughs> good, good job, you, you nailed that. Yeah, I nailed it. <laughs> no, but just to see how small New Zealand is, another thing the lawyer said not to say, but don't tweet it, I trust you, Michael last week called our defamation lawyer looking for representation. That's how small New Zealand is. <laughs> and our lawyer had to be like, We've got a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> on the phone. It's wild. Okay, well, there's a bunch of stuff, but I can't talk to it. We're going to go deep, deep back, back of the wall. Right, yeah. Okay, great. Um, after focusing on the person you did in Tickled and with Michael in this film, have you learned anything about the background of what creates people like this? Parents. <laughs> Both, it's interesting the parallels between them. Um, they both, I don't have any huge insight, but they both had incredibly strict um, Catholic upbringings. Um, and they both had parents that like, fucking hated them yeah. for their sexuality. So it's not great. If, if, you know, rewind the clock if D'Amato and Michael had parents who were like, yeah, be you, possibly a different outcome. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's all tied into their relationship with their uh, parents. Yeah. Okay. Um, we could label him a narcissistic sociopath, I think, comfortably, with neither of us having psychology degrees. Yeah. Um, he does seem a tiny bit different than D'Amato in just the level of narcissism. It's high. Higher than the models. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's off the chain. Okay, so now I'm going to publicly thank you because as you watch this, it becomes maddening that there isn't a recourse. And of course, we all do have liberty and free will. We get to pick who we hang out with and who we let brainwash us. And that would be impossible to legislate and police. And really, the last options, the fourth estate or comedians or artists to say, we see you. No one can do anything, but we see you, and this movie's gonna play across the street from your house. So I thank you because you want this fucker to have some justice come to him, and you have brought that about. So I think I speak for everyone. Thank you. You know, say good things about it online. We're we're just we're playing in very limited areas. So you know, go onto Letterbox, review it, tweet it, Instagram about it. If you hated it, quit Twitter. Quit Instagram. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't like it, preferably say yeah, good yeah. things. But no, say what you want. But just talk about it because this is a tiny little thing. I want it to spread, and it's very specific to New Zealand. And I do hope that organ has some repercussions from this. But also, I, I it sounds sort of hoity-toity, but. I hope that people watch it and understand and maybe see someone in their own life that's like organ mm -hmm. and is like, oh no, fuck off. You know? Time to snip it. Yeah, there are elements of him everywhere and it's just like, get fucked. <laughs> that's a great bit of parting advice uh, for everybody. Uh, thanks for coming and supporting my YouTube channel.